Good evening, Dungeon Masters, I'm Baron Durop. So here's the challenge. You've been asked to Dungeon Master a session using a system none of your 10 players have ever used before, and the game is scheduled to start in just 15 minutes. Last weekend, I did just this and played a rule set called Cairn with some of my friends, including Bob Worldbuilder. And that session was really fun. So check out his video on Cairn after this one. With that said, the requirements to prep and run a great adventure are so straightforward they can be executed in under a quarter hour and yet are frequently overlooked. While most people might start by determining a central tension or story issue to develop their adventure, including myself, for this process we'll start by scaffolding a localized adventure location. While larger campaigns might include a full hex crawl of regional area, we only have 15 minutes to prepare for the adventure, so we need to zoom in on a tight location. For this purpose, we can use what I call a hex rosette. Smaller than a full-on hex crawl, and even smaller than Robin Gordon's hex flower system from their blog God Goblin's henchman, this hex rosette has only seven hexes and each will be packed with interesting stuff for the players to explore. To fill out the rosette while reducing as much cognitive load as possible, we'll be using a few random tables from the RPG Maze Rats by Ben Milton from Questing Beast. So thanks, Ben. You're welcome. Maze Rats is marketed as a 2D6 D&D Lite alternative rule set, but it truly shines as a resource for inspirational random tables. Maze Rats tables don't just include wilderness locations to explore, but tons of tables to quickly flesh out magic items, NPCs, deities, monsters, cities, factions, dungeons, and who knows what else. So to get a general feel of where the adventure will be taking place, we can roll on the Wilderness Regions table. This table is set up as a D66 table. So first you roll once to identify which subtable to use, and then again to identify a specific listing. As an exercise, we can roll a 53, which gives us a result of Riverlands, and a 56 on the Wilderness Regions table to give us a sweltering attribute. So perhaps we're in a extremely humid river system like the Niger River Delta, or perhaps the Lower Amazon Basin. With the general vibe of the Hex Rosette's geography determined, we need to figure out what specifically is in each hex. To do that, we can combine entries from the Wilderness Landmarks, Discoveries, and Structures tables and think through the prompts. Since we have seven hexes, just do this seven times, and with a little creativity, turn them into true places of interest. As an example, a 41 gets us a pit from the landmark table, a 16 gets us a bridge from the structure table, and a 34 gets us a map from the discovery table. Pop all these as notes somewhere into the rosette and rinse and repeat. The next hex gets a lake, bridge, and strange plant prompts, for example. Using these prompts, we can create a hex with a flooded pit with a long bridge that extends over the deep expanse and where a dead bloated body is floating under the bridge, holding a map in a bottle. A few miles from there, the next hex has a large lake containing a small island covered in runestones surrounded by strange poisonous plants, a good reward for the party's ranger if they can manage to swim across the alligator infested lake. Elsewhere, a ruined watchtower on a rise between two streams is mostly toppled over, but an older hermit fisherman lives inside the ruin and has information about about the local area. As you fill out the map, it's important to remember that each hex, as drawn on paper, is more there to just demonstrate a geospatial relationship to other nearby landmarks, and not really demonstrate a fixed, measurable location between specific distances. It's more constructive to think of each hex as a representation of the time it takes to travel through or into the next hex, not as some gimmicky six-mile distance. Typically, in these kinds of smaller, tighter hex crawls, I use a half day of travel as a guideline for travel time between hexes. Therefore, after traveling through two hexes, the characters will need to rest and take watch. Since quality adventure design also has some kind of time limit that applies pressure to the party's actions, these half day hex traversals help chip away at the allotted time. For this sort of hex rosette, I find that a three to five day timer till something really bad happens works best and allows the party to handle some dangerous encounters with just enough breathing room for rest and recuperation.
Once the map is laid out, it's possible an idea for a dangerous threat might jump out at you as you work through the random prompts. However, if that's not the case, we can use Maze Rats again to roll up a monster who is afflicting the region. However, if you're preparing a high-stakes, one-shot adventure, I highly recommend using dragons in these situations. The game is called Dungeons & Dragons, yet players hardly ever get a chance to fight them. Greenskins are much more common in appearance, and so we might as well call the game Grottos and Goblins instead. That aside, if you want to throw something totally unique at your players, we can iterate on Maze Rat's monster creation tables as well. For example, rolling on a few of the tables gets us a rhino-bodied, spider-silk-wielding, cannibalistic, regenerating, envious monster who compels all who come near it to worship it or become consumed in terrifying rituals. With that prompt in mind, mashing the stats of an elephant with a giant spider's web attack a troll's regeneration ability, and a 1 in 3 refresh to cast calm emotions, you have yourself a terrifying monster your players will have never seen before, likely with a cadre of cult worshippers following around its lair. Next, determine which are the most precarious or dangerous locations in your adventure area and place some treasure there. Doing so allows players to negotiate a risk and reward dichotomy within the context of their time limit. If you're getting bored of the plus five holy avengers and bags of holding or all those other tropey magic items, Maze Rats again has you covered. To quickly come up with a unique magic item, pick a table to roll on from the treasure and equipment tables like weapons because who doesn't like weapons? and then pop over to the magic tables to generate a spell prompt the item is imbued with. In this example, we might roll a claymore on the weapons table, and then an ethereal effect and a physical form on the magic spell tables. Rolling twice more gets us a claymore of the excruciating colossus. Perhaps this was a greatsword that has expanded critical hits and bonus damage against monsters larger than the wielder. This sword would be very helpful against that rhino spider demon from earlier. Now that you have a place to adventure, magic items to find, and a Rhydo spider cult running amok, you have everything you need for that situation that basically runs itself. Just drop the players in a village at the edge of the map, and use a quest giver rolled up using Cairns or Maze Rats' character creation tables for a personality trait and appearance, and have them tell the players certain doom will befall the village in the middle value of 3d6 days if the characters don't do something to help. Add a few helpful omens from a blind grandmother who lives in the village, as well as portents of magic items that would help the players, and throw in a local merchant who says they will round up all the gold they can muster if the village is saved. With all of that, your players will be off to save the day. For a totally predictable M. Night Shyamalan plot twist, your players will enjoy, connect your initial quest giver to the major threat in some way, and your players will have fun both killing the monster and bringing the quest giver to justice. Clearly, the quest giver was really a member of the Rhino Spider cult all along, and and was trying to get rid of the pesky heroes by sending them to their death. If you'd like to see more about Cairn, the system I used last weekend to run all these adventures I made in this way, then you should absolutely head over to Bob World Builder's video about it. A link to it is on your screen now, or you can click on a link in the description. If you'd like to help me make more content like this in the future, please consider supporting me on Patreon or becoming a channel member. Thanks for watching, Dungeon Masters, and until next time, good night.